this to get this to get this. So just you know, quick fire news, man. Just some news, just to keep things ahead. Of the point is in the news. Porch, give me that you pill. Porch, give me that pill. Give me that trouble. Give me that trouble. Yes, we're still in the UCL. Easy. So, Rasmus, Rasmus, um, your boy Rasmus. Shout out to your boy Rasmus, man. The Danish Lanish. The Danish Lanish, man. And um, so, Ten Hag says that he doesn't really want to comment on anything with regards to um, Kane. And he's focused on trying to get your boy Rasmus. Now, let's keep things a stack. I mean this with all due disrespect. If Man United pull up with Rasmus as their main striker for next season, then they should not be taken seriously as title challengers. I don't give a damn whether you've got Mason mid-mount in your team. I don't give a damn whether you've not made Bruno captain, even though he does deserve to be made captain. If you're up with a dude called Rasmus, <laughs> let's, 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 see, let's see, if you run up with the Moose, if you think that a guy called the Moose is going to make it title challengers, hell no. United, I think they're going to do well. I think... They have a good squad to definitely solidify that top four. Maybe say something in Europe. But in terms of what Pep is and what's hated here, Rasmus as your striker simply isn't enough. If United instead had pulled up with um, a Kane, then we're talking about something completely and totally different. Something totally different. I'm sure Rasmus is good. I'm sure his quality. But you need, he's not a statement signing. Like, Kane is a statement signing of intent of already to see what's up. Mount is not a statement signing. The Moose is not a statement signing. They're just good signings. Mount, that's a good signing. Rasmus, it's a good signing. But it's not a statement signing. Because if you're City or you're Pep, are you afraid that United have got to the Moose? No. If United now gets Kane, that is now something that Pep and City will be afraid of because they tried to get Kane, and Kane is one of the most lethal strikers in Europe. So it is. It is what it is. Are we now comparing the moose to to Kane? No, we're not going to do that. So let's see how that goes because I thought Kane would actually come this summer, but of course that is unfortunately not happening, man. Um. So here's the thing. Right now, we need to save football. Football needs to be saved. It needs to be saved because we cannot have a situation where um your boy. We cannot, and I, and I freeze, we cannot have a situation. Let me, let me let me repeat this. We cannot have a situation where um, Mbappe signs a contract with PSG. Not a contract, a blood pact. You see, there's a contract and there's a blood pact. We cannot have a situation where Mbappe signs a blood pact with PSG. Because I'm hearing it's 10 years, 5 solar systems, 6 universes... And two alternate um, timelines. <laughs> Bro, it's a lot. I get it, guys. If you gave me an, an alternate timeline and a freaking unicorn, I'd be like, okay, fine. It's a unicorn. It's a timeline. It's a solar system. It's a galaxy. It's a freaking Milky Way, you know? Um, but, Mbappe, you're the face of football. You're the future of football. We cannot... The face of football can't be a tree trunk. Guys, I like trees. Like... Trees are one of the oldest things in the world. Like, what's it called? They give you branches, they give you leaves, they give you green. Trees are amazing. Bro, there's a, there's a, there's a freaking park near where I am. There are a lot of trees. So, let please be clear here. I can respect trees. This is not me being respectful to, to trees. Trees are very important, and I respect nature. I'm a nature merchant. Shout out to you. What was it called? Shout out to your boy, Attenborough. nature. <laughs> So it was easy to do. I would like chill. Mbappe, you can't send that contract to PSG. It doesn't matter what they offer you. It doesn't matter how tempting the Qatari thing is. You cannot. You must either see this contract or challenge to the Santiago <laughs> You must take your talents to the Santiago Benabi. I was gonna say, either the Santiago Benabeo. That's the thing. Santiago Bernabeu must have a rich. Um, but he must not sign that. Because if Mbappe signs a contract with PSG, the future of football as we know it is done. It's finished. And this should now be called the half hope nature hot. Shout out to Boyle Obama Yank. So overall, his move to Chelsea was an complete and abject failure. I mean, it was an L. He did great for Barcelona, hence why Barcelona wanted him back. But at Chelsea, it was a failure. And my thing, though, is should should he have maybe been kept a bit more? 
at um, Chelsea? I don't know. But look, he's going to Marseille. I think that's French speaking, so it's not too much of a culture change. And I think this is something to maybe upset his, his career. What is left for Aubameyang? Can Aubameyang still say what's up? Can he still be that dude? Can he still be the ying? I'm not really too sure whether he can be that. But because, let's put it this way. What he did at Chelsea, I don't know anybody that would want to take him. Although, flip side to that is, he didn't do well because the team was a mess. How many players actually did well at, at Chelsea? And Aubameyang, once upon a time, was one of the most lethal strikers in the world in terms of like his goal-to-game ratio. And we now saw what he did at Barcelona. We saw what he did to Real Madrid at the El Clasico, at the Bede. So, for Marseille, they're like, no, there's a quality player there. And I think it's unfair for us to really judge him based on how he became a Class B brick at Chelsea because we can't really blame it on him, blame it on the, on the messed up environment that was there at Chelsea. I just think that it was just unfortunate that we didn't get the Barcelona or the um, um, or the Arsenal Aubameyang at Chelsea. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Good luck to the Yang Yang, my fellow African brother at Marseille. Um, so Ten Hag's throwing shade. So, so Ten Hag, first of all, you strip Maguire of the captains. No, you drop Maguire from the first team. You strip him of the captaincy. And now you say that um, Maguire is very important to the squad. And it's good that we have 3,000 centre-backs because we need a squad to say what's up. What you pretty much telling Maguire is you're a great side piece. No, basically, you're a great side piece to the side piece. So basically, put it this way. Like, Lissandra Martinez and Varane, they're like the like the wives, then some guy as a side piece. Maguire, you see, Maguire is the friend of the side piece. Because you know you have, you have your wife, then you have your side piece, then you have the girl that you mess with, then you have... So Maguire is the friend of the girl you mess with of the side piece connected to the wife. So he's like fourth and fifth in that pecking order, which is freaking crazy. Ten Hag, he was in Sultan Maguire. What Ten Hag is trying to say to Maguire in translation is get your ass out of this freaking club. We don't, I don't want you. The fans don't want you. They think you're a fridge. A disgusting hashtag called get the fridge. The bridge is trending. Get out of my, of my damn club, you filthy stinking bum with a huge forehead. That's not me, guys. That's not me saying it. I think that's rude. I think it's disrespectful. This is Ten Hag saying. Ten Hag is saying, get out of my club, you filthy stinking fridge who looks like a damn slabhead, you moron. That's not me saying it. That's because I think Maguire is an all right guy. That is, I'm just paraphrasing what Ten Hag is saying. Ten Hag is was insulting and throwing shade at Maguire by saying we have three thousand centre backs, including that bomb, um, called the Magna team. So it is what it is. I think Maguire find a new team. There's no point, especially with the Euros coming in and knowing that you're part of the first team for England. Get out of that United club. Um, so Harry Kane has come out and said that no. Sp- um, he's not going to have any contract extension with um, Tottenham. And it's admin that there's not going to be any contract ex- ex- extension. And this is what we expected. And for Levy, I think Levy and Spurs, they're trying to find ways to see whether they can extend his contract because they don't want to lose him for nothing because that's just going to be horrible and bad business. Um, but I think, though, that... Um, what was I going to say? I think, though, that... I doubt Kane is going to sign that extension. If he signs that extension, he's the biggest bum of all time. Put it this way, like, if he signs that con- ex- extension, you will be seen as the biggest loser of all time. Coward, loser, good-for-nothing bum. And you'll only be, re- be relevant on an island <laughs> that's next to the Thames River. That's it. Like, literally, if you sign that, you break Shira's record, you'll only be famous on an island. <laughs> that's it. So, out of that island... People will look at you as a as as a, as a as a bomb. It's a fact. If you bring no no trophies, you'll be seen as a bomb. So here's the thing: Kane is like, I'd rather be king of an island than king of the world. Now, I'd rather be loved globally than loved on on, on an island with, with a bunch of palm trees. <laughs> so, so, and here's me: I love islands. I'm I'm trying to get enough dubs to retire to a freaking island. So I do love and appreciate islands. But for someone of your talents. Do you just want to be known as, a, as an island merchant? <laughs> That's it. So if you break Shira's record, you're a Premier League legend, you'll be known as an island merchant. So yes, just praise it on an island. 
So come on, kid. I mean, let, don't sign that contract, push for removal, and try and actually leave somewhat of a legacy because it would be horrendous if you ended your career not having a single trophy. Um, but this also um, flows in well with um, Manny, Bayern, and so because oh, <laughs> I'm looking at my notes here and I'm like, wait, who wrote these notes? I wrote these notes. So Bayern Munich are trying to sell off Manny and they started clubs trying to say, what's up? So we're hearing like 40 mil is the um, price that's been branded around um, for your boy, Saudi Mane. And because what's interesting about this is that if Bayern, give me the money, or then give me the money, like if they say, yo, give me that 50 Likini, give me that 60 Likini, they can get that 50 and say, yo, use it to fund it. So if they can squeeze 50 from um, the Saudi club, they can just say, yo, Levy, you greedy piece. <laughs> Here's 50 plus another 50 combined. Here's your 100, you greedy piece of SH. This is what it is. So, yeah, if they can get that out, and you know how crazy it is, so you're saying that after one season, you couldn't ship off money to. So, and you know what's so crazy? There was another Senegalese who spent one season at. Chelsea and is now going to um, Saudi Arabia. So you think there's going to be another Senegalese spent one year hated by, by the fans because every band fan have supposed them said man is a bomb. And some band fans said that <laughs> there have been some band fans, not naming any names, Hokage, who said that he should be listed at the, as the top 10 transfers of all time. <laughs> no, top 10 worst transfers of all time. That's how much he's been um, hated. So yeah, man, look, I mean, um, I think it'd be, it'd be a great deal. I and I think if they can get 40 or 50 for him, then this Bayern, this Kane to Bayern deal may actually be a reality. I still don't think it will happen. Kane says at Tottenham, leaves to United on a free next summer. That's what I think happens. But stranger things have happened. Lastly, now here's the thing that I don't even know how to really to discuss this, but here's the thing though. So Celta Vigo, I think they dropped a five piece on the on <laughs> On the sour, <laughs> on, on basically, <laughs> I mean, basically, Otto dropped a five piece on the owl. <laughs> so that's crazy, but look, it's friendly. So the owl now went up against Benfica, Fifica, you know, and um, the owl's captain, Cristiano. You see, here's the thing no one, no one wants to get memed, nobody wants to get memed, but. Um, people send me. I say, people, stop sending me the, the, this DM. See, the only guy that I like, you see, some shout out to the guys that send me great DMs. Amen, you're a legend, man, because the guys who actually send me great DMs that help me for new stories and stuff to talk about. So, shout out to the guys who send me those DMs in there. But this is disrespectful because guys were like, yo, did you see Ronaldo got cooked? And I think, I think it was Ricardo. Someone said that, oh, Messi sent <laughs> Di Maria as an agent just to throw more shade on him. And my thing, though, is, look, he's old. Christian is old. But it just shows you the craziness of social media because this is even something I want to go into another news stick. In this age of social media, you're going to get got. So anytime someone does a crazy skill against you, it's going to go on TikTok, it's going to go on Twitter. So now when you go on Twitter or social media, it's like, yo, man, Di Maria got cooked by Ronaldo. Ronaldo, don't feel bad. Di Maria has cooked a lot of guys. Like... Go to the Football Hot Wear website. De Maria adopted P.O. Like, if a player makes a grown man do the splits, that's a guy who you should not be feeling embarrassed about getting cooked by. De Maria gave birth to uh, Dembele in a World Cup final. You see, he gave birth to Dembele and he adopted Dembele in a World Cup final front of thousands. So for Cristiano, don't feel bad. Because De Maria could have done this to you in a UCL final or a World Cup final. So feel good that he only did this to you at a friendly, which is all good. And this is my last thing I wanted to go into. How that's. So, it's so funny. So, in this social media era that we're in, you look at how that's. So, he gets cooked. Because it's like, oh my gosh, how that's, how that's. Um, he's... Um, um, he's like the first guy in history to not score a goal for, um, 
in the volley crossbar challenge where a guy gi- gives you like a, a pass and you have to volley in and is the first guy to not actually hit the target and then score a goal what happens that goes all around social media how it's trash it's crap it's useless us we now cook cooked him they now play a match and so forth and he actually scores a really good goal and a quality volley and it's funny once that happens you now see him go on to um twitter and he basically posts like um a thing about how or oh, i think you know, have that with a bullet point there because that's twitter thing he, he he put there is in direct correlation response to how it was getting cooked but here's the funny thing pre-social media no one would have known one about that pre-social media do you think any newspaper any sports magazine would have had a story about how oh Havertz didn't score a goal from the in the volley challenge. No, that's not it. That's not it. It's a story. The story that we be carried is oh yeah, he's fine. he scores his first goal for Arsenal in a friendly game. But social media gets everything from training. Favre says it gets everything. So and anything that you can get cooked by can go through. So it's just unlocked that Havertz in the social media era. That thing which let's be real is irrelevant of like you scoring from like a volley challenge. That now gets um, taken over social media and used to cook cook you. But pre-social media, that would not have even been a story to begin with. So, and that's why people say like, are people now afraid to sort of expose themselves to either try to um, they, they, they don't want to now um, go into tackles or put themselves in situations that will get them cooked? Because the fact of the matter is, especially these young players. Of course, they use social me- media. They're on social media all day because these young guys who are now in their twenties, they grew up with social media. So if they, they got cooked, they will know they got cooked. So that's that crazy mad thing. So guys, that's just my news roundup. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to hear more of this, it is what it is. And I'll see you guys on the next live show. Peace out. Stay true. Zach still lives. <laughs>